Today we're going to be ranking the best, most well-known cocktails up there is James. Uh, James is from the uh, More Cans Ain't Wise podcast that he does with Ben. Uh, it's fantastic. They're on episode four once a week. Really good. Check it out. Uh, I think we'll be hosting some of the podcasts uh, over the short term on this YouTube channel. So uh, you'll be able to catch them there as well. They're also on Spotify. What are you drinking there, James? Gone for the old Aldi classic. <laughs> it's, in, <laughs> it's in my fridge as well. Mate, if the, the only beer in the world was this, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shall we start then? Uh, you can't. James can't see our screen, but we, we can obviously see James. So we've got S, and that's like God tier. So a cocktail that is you know, the best, a 10 out of 10, the perfection ends up in S. A, obviously A class, B, C, D, E, F is a fail, the worst cocktail. James doesn't know what the cocktails are, um, but we're just gonna crack into it. And I'm going to put James here uh, on the hot seat. James, name a cocktail. We could play Hangman. Name a cocktail. Oh, yeah, I like this. Let's go, this is Chris Peel we're talking about. Manhattan. Yes, yeah, that's on there. It almost wasn't included. Now, where are you saying for Manhattan? For me personally, like in that style of like whiskey drink, um, I think there's better drinks out there, but it is above average. For me, like it's a B class cocktail. A B class. I would say A or B. So yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a bourbon or rye cocktail. It's sweetened with vermouth. So we're saying B. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Manhattan. If you're pretending to be. A swanky lounge singer when you've had a few beers yeah but it's a bit pretentious isn't gone. it yeah like, like the, the, drink, I mean, I... the drink itself i say is better than an old-fashioned and they're very similar in taste obviously manhattan's got uh, the vermouth uh, aspect but it just looks a bit you know well should we should we go to i'm hoping you've got old-fashioned on the list yeah should we go to old-fashioned yeah absolutely so tell, talk so, us through so an old-fashioned in... well so the reason that i put old uh, manhattan at b is because i want to put or an old fashioned at A. Right. Technically a way of lengthening with water and sugar a normal whiskey drink. So instead of your fifty mils of whiskey like with the water and stuff, you lengthen it and stirring it with ice and it just makes it opens up the flavours of a whiskey or a bourbon. Yeah. So Yeah, and, and you're complementing it as well by adding the sugar and the bitters. So yeah, it's it's, it's a great and the, and, and the and the orange as well, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd pretty steadfastly say A, it's but do you agree or definitely uh, and uh, I think we'll come on to why it's called an old fashioned later on, but we'll leave it for that now. You got me drinking them with maple syrup instead of uh, Demera sugar. Uh, so um, I've been having yeah. my maple fashioned, I think they're class. Maple fashions. Yeah. As long as the, the sugar's reasonable quality, then you've got a lot of scape for, like you say, um, Demera or like big dark brown. As long as you can yeah. dissolve it properly, then it's they're great. Yeah, like. In, uh, in some of the cocktail books, so there's uh, a 1948 book, uh, so like old school, and that was really introducing cocktails from bars um, into uh, into the homes. And it was it was written by a guy called David uh, David Ambrose Embury, David A. Embury. Um, it's called The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks. Uh, in, and in that, he advocates using sugar syrup because it's like you don't want to have to wait 20 minutes for it to dissolve. You're a, class a classicalist, though, so I can't imagine you're a fan of that. I imagine you, you use proper sugar cubes or... Um, I'm a bit of a hypocrite to be fair. I think it, it's, it's knowing your customer as well. Like a lot of people yeah, who order old fashions want, want the full process. So I'm going to go Pina Colada. Right, I've got it here. Where are we putting that? Now, this is a big guilty pleasure for me as a Pina Colada. It's the same. <laughs> I think it'd be great. <laughs> We're both um, tiki guys, aren't we? We like that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going bond, went A. Yeah, I agree. I, the... <laughs> I agree completely. It's uh, delicious. I drink on a summer day. And the key to a pina colada is a tiny pinch of salt. Um, like I didn't know why it was, but then I found out in the last couple of years that sugar and salt both bring out flavour. Um, so like that little bit of salt really enhances all the flavours. Um, should, should we go for a similar one from that family then? I think you will have gone Sex on the Beach. Oh yes, I have. I have. I... Now, this, is, this is again one of those ones that gets derided quite a lot. I mean, for me it's too sweet and like... I will make it like 100 times out of 100 if somebody asks. And I do see the benefits of it, like, for people who don't know, it's vodka, peach, snaps, cranberry, orange juice, layered. Um, I'm going to say, I mean, it's going to be tough for me to put anything in D or F here. I think it's a D, though. I, I can't give it a D. Like, you can't. You will see, it, you will see it, it. It's an E or an F. Like, I've got a rule, and it's uh, the more sexually explicit the cocktail name, the worse the cocktail is. 
Because you, 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 I think that's I think that's fair. Yeah, E for me, if not F. Well, I, I could I could agree with you on E because yeah, I can okay. think of a drink that's F that you'll have on your list. It's on, um, the, it's on the list. We know what we're talking about. It's on the list. We'll come to that towards the end. But it's on, it's on the list because... Are we thinking of the same? Oh, yeah. We, we've got to be. Strawberry daiquiri. Uh, we haven't got strawberry daiquiri, but we do have daiquiri. Okay, so just straight off the top of my head here, like, daiquiri, it's probably going to be a B overall. And I probably need to explain myself here. Like a classic daiquiri, rum, lime, sugar, better qualities of rum. Can make a delicious short drink, usually usually served in a coupe. But I mean, to hit that A, I need a drink that I'm going to go and go to a bar and be almost guaranteed that even if it's not quite top level, it's still going to be absolutely delicious. Yeah. And I'm not sure that's where daiquiri's at. Well, I think a B is fair. The daiquiri is the third most popular cocktail in the world, and it is not in Britain. People don't drink daiquiris in Britain, and I don't know why that is in Britain. But like they they they, they love it in America, and for me, it's. Well, it's, it's as I mentioned earlier, a fine art of mixing drinks. It's one of their six basic drinks, but it's just not it's not popular. So I think B is fair because it puts it with a Manhattan. So I'll, I'll, I'll go along with you. Let's keep, let's keep rum whilst I'm on yeah. it. So mojito, this is an A for me. I think this is a very easy A. I'm a big fan of using products that might not be of the best quality or easy, or especially products that are ready readily available to everybody and making them delicious. And I think if you have a bottle of Havana Free, Bacardi, um, Blanco, Bacardi, or like anything like that, which you can easily get from a supermarket, you can turn that with lime and mint, crushed ice and soda and sugar I, I mean, into a delicious drink. You, you, you've hit on the two brands for, for, for a mojito there because it was invented in 1862. Well, that's a lie, actually. It was invented by the crew on Sir Francis Drake's ship, ship when he was exploring the Americas. Um, but it, it got its name in 1862 when Facundo Bacardi started um, the Bacardi uh, distillery in, in, in Cuba. Uh, they were exiled to Puerto Rico and um, the Cuban government took over and they created Havana Club Rum, so either of those work in it. Can't agree with you on an A though. It's, it's got, for, okay. me, for, for me, it's down at C or D. Like, I can't, I can't put a, a, a mojito on the same level as a Manhattan and, and a daiquiri. Well, um, I, think it's a, I think it might be a B. Like, it's definitely not a C, just right. because of how it ele elevates the products. But I think well, that, that, we that, probably have. That's a compromise, isn't it? Like, if, if you have it at A and I have it at C, we'll put yeah. it at B. Caipirinha, for me, I mean, we put Mojito at B. Yeah. Like, Caipirinha is crazily popular in South America. Like, like in terms of uh, people who don't know, it's cachaca based, yeah. which is a sugar, sugar cane spirit. I, I could be wrong, but I think they make. Um, 20 billion litres of, uh, of cachaça a year in Brazil. It just comes from Brazil. Would I, would I order a cachaça? Would I order a caipirinha when I'm out? Probably. Like, for me, it's a C. For me, it's an F. Like, it's an F. Oh, really? Yeah, like, wow. It's romanticised for some reason, and there was a trend in about 2010 where people stopped making caipirinhas with cachaça and just made it with vodka to make a caprioska, and it's just like, you can use it, it just shows how interchangeable cachaca is, and cachaca's not a good spirit, it's literally made in bathtubs in the favelas of Brazil, they don't need stills for it, it's it's like uh, Russian potato vodka or like old school British gin, it's, it's, it's just, there's no, there's no quality to the product, it's just a poor product that's been romanticised, like the mojito, it's just bumped up with lime. And the reason the lime and the sugar's there is to, to, to disguise the disgusting taste of cachaca. Now, it's a firm favourite with bartenders and a lot of other people, but I don't understand why I've never got it. I think I think I can go with you on D. I mean, yeah. again, it's not something that I... It's something that I have ordered in the past. It's something that I would order again, but I can see why why you don't like it. Um, well, I imagine it's a porn star martinis up there. I know the inventor um, of the Porn Star Martini, actually. Uh, I, I met him at Imbibe, uh, Doug Anker. Um, so it's a British invention, uh, and it's Britain's most famous uh, or most popular cocktail. It's a D. It's a D. Yeah, I don't, I like, there's variations of vanilla vodka, passion fruit, orange, uh, sorry, pineapple. I don't get it. Um, I, I make a lot, like, and I will always try and make it as nice as I can. I understand like taste profile, that sweeter taste profile. It's an easy access drink, but for me, there's no complexity to it. It's what it's one flavour. Admittedly, you've got the prosecco and the fizz on the side, but 
for me, it's it's very one dimensional. I think it's great. I, I mean, I, 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 like you've got your passion fruit and your pineapple. It's like a real tropical drink that you you don't get those flavor profiles in many many other drinks. I'm going to have to insist on we put it as a C because I think it's a I, B. I, well, I, I can go with C simply because it makes the bars that I work for a lot of money. Okay. So if 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 only that, and then, and yeah, yeah, I think I, I think at this juncture we should thank Douglas Anchor for. Uh, you know, paying ours and every other cocktail bartender in the country's wages. So thank well, you for we'll inviting done. We'll get on to the next one that I think we'll... I equally have to thank over the last at least five years, probably ten, for keeping me in clothes. Um, espresso Martini. So that's D- Dick Bradsell, who's a London bartender. He uh, he made it for um, a model. He used to work by a coffee machine, uh, and he, so that's what inspired him behind it. Uh, and he made it with Viber Over originally, but it was a drink that would... Both wake it up and I think this is a very steady, like again, easy access drink. I'm going to go B for this. Well, let's talk about the the other coffee drink that I wanted to bring up, White Russian. Yeah. So this is one of two drinks that I have right at the very top. Very differently tasting drinks, but this is a god tier drink for me. This. You put your S. Yeah. Oh, I've got it on A. Like, I've 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 I sort of dropped it at A before you'd said anything. So. I can I can I can live with a. I think the only thing holding it back is probably the limit of two or three per night in terms of how much uh, milk you can drink in one sitting. I think a is a good place. Like like yeah, I can I can live with a. Um, again, just easy end of the night drink. If somebody offers me a drink when I'm working, White Russian's just ideal. Yeah. Good party drink as well. You can knock them out in front of customers, and as soon as somebody sees one, that tends to be the way that they go. We have um, we have got another milky drink on here. Go on, what's it? What's the what's the milk one you've gone with? An Alexander. So Alexanders were oh, right. in, initially made with gin, gin Alexanders, but then no. Have I, you gone brandy brandy specific? Just generic Alexander. Like you don't find gin Alexanders now, but brandy Alexander, I'm happy to go with that. But just the Alexander in general, and I think it's one of those love it or hate it drinks, like. Yeah, I think it's you're not gonna, you're not going to get much love out of me here. It's a D. Okay, I'm happy with that. I I, I understand that. I understand the principle of them. I understand why the fla- the flavour, the use of cream, chocolate is, is used. But I've got to say, it isn't for me. It's an age, I would never order one. It's an age old cocktail. It's a really old, uh, a really old cocktail. I can't remember when it when it came about, but it was, you know, it's. It's before they had more ingredients like we do nowadays and different mixing techniques and stuff. But I'm happy with tea. What do you want to do next? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go tiki. Let's go zombie. Yeah. Is your zombie on fire or not? It depends. I mean, I make a. We make a lot of different variations, and each bar you work at will tend to have the house zombie. Zombie was Don Beach rather than Vic Burger, and wasn't it? They're, they're like the two tiki guys. Trade, yes. Trade a bit. Trader Vic and Don the Beach Coma. It's the best marketed drink ever because it's Don Beach. It's definitely Don Beach. Yeah. Because he said there was a limit to only having two. You can only have two. And that was just a challenge to everyone that they'd come through and say, well, I'm going to be the exception. I'm going to have three of these. It's got loads of different uh, spirits, but it, like, it still tastes good. Yeah. And it's more like a party piece, I guess, than like a drink of you know, significance. Yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be, for me, is where we put this is, I'm going to quite heavily argue towards middle of the pack, simply because I think the idea of drinking them is to get drunk, isn't it? in terms of, yes, good tiki bartenders can make them taste delicious, but where is it beyond that? So are we saying B or C? I think it has to be a C. Okay. I think it does have to be a C. Let's stay tiki, let's go Mai Tai. Yeah. Um, so, Straight away, this is a, this is an A drink for me. Yeah, gotta be. So, if you ask any any bartender what the best, or like around the world, what the best rum drinks are, they will say Mai Tai or a Decker. In Britain, it's probably more likely to be a Mai Tai. It's because you're using the Falernum or the Orgeat or, uh, you know, the lime just to mask the taste, as you do with uh, mojitos and caipirinhas. So you can just stack it with overproof rum. Uh, and you can still get that punch, but the edge is taken off. I definitely agree. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of lots, lots of citrus on it, so lots of lime, uh, almonds or yeah. doji to the max. And if you can put orange through it, like I did with a triple sec or even orange brandy through it, that gives you the balance 
Um, and it's 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 masking without orange, without taking away from the flavour. Orange of curacao. Well, while we're on rum cocktails, air mail. So rum, rum, champagne, beautiful drink. For me, this is the best rum drink. This is a very Chris Peel style of drink. <laughs> well, the champagne. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, the champagne and more. This is this was round like prohibition. Yeah. Late, yeah, yeah, late you, 40s. Like... You're, you're absolutely spot on prohibition. So it's a bit earlier than the 40s. Um, but what they used to do is they used to fly from Florida down to uh, to Cuba and they used to drink air mails in Cuba during prohibition. So like, all the politicians, all the senators, all the you know the congressmen all used to fly down and they used to, to, to just, just fill the boots on air mails. If you were going to construct a drink using the finest ingredients, this is what you'd end up with. I mean, you've kind of twisted my arm here because this was going in at a C. Right. Like, it's it is definitely not for me. But I'm happy if you want to go A with this. Yeah. I, do. I, I could understand why why you like it, and um, I understand why people do do enjoy it. So I could go I could go there for for airmail. Cur Royal. Yeah. Um, this is a D drink for me. Yeah, I agree. The can be delicious. It's just very simple. Instead of drinking. Soda, just having like some black a blackcurrant and soda. The air mail, the champagne, like highlights the drink and makes it better. Whereas this, you're using something to mask the taste of champagne. So There's a champagne drink for people who don't like champagne. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I think D is fair. Oh, have you got Buxfizz in there? I've got the other word for Buxfizz. The one, the one, the one which is same ingredients but a different split. We're talking mimosa here. We are talking mimosa. I think it belongs in the same category. Like, yeah, I'll pile through them at Christmas, but I think you, it has to be a D. Do you know why it's called a Bucks Fizz? Um, after the successful 1980s Eurovision act. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's a uh, Bucks, I think a Bucks, the hotel was a Bucks hotel. Fizz is a style, nice. fizz is a style um, drink. Julep. I love a julep. Um, I can imagine myself, Kentucky Downs, piling through some bourbon and fresh mint and uh, sugar, I think they're delicious. Um, I don't. I don't think I've ever had a julep, because I think there's a hotel in Washington that does them amazingly, and then there's Louisiana and there's Kentucky and places in the deep south. And I don't think you've had a julep unless you've drunk there. Those ones. Yeah. I think it is an acquired taste as well, but I think that's that's the case with bourbon in general. Yeah. Are we happy with B here? No. <laughs> I've got Do you a, not like them at all? I've got it as an S. <laughs> an S? Yeah. Um, a f- B for a julep. Wow. Sacrilege. I've got, like you say, I think until we go out there and try them, if they are that elite, we can't put oh. them up there. Right, let's put it at B then. A Negroni. It's an A. It's an A? Yeah. I mean, you can persuade me away, but... Like, like you know me. I came back from Australia, and like Negroni is the drink of Australia. It was when I was there in, I don't know, five years ago or however long. And I don't think it's quite an S. Invented in 1918, uh, I think in Florence. Uh, in five... fact, in fact, if if I was going to put either of a Negroni or a Boulevardier at S, it would be a Boulevardier. Yeah, that's why. I, that's that's S. Yeah, right. That's there. It's on S. So okay, yeah. So, I'm, I'm happy with that. So Boulevardier S. So so Negroni A. Circling back to Negroni, right? One point five shots of gin, one shot of Campari, one shot of dark vermouth. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a madman, you can use the best move on the market, in my opinion, which is the uh, the, the cocky C O double C H I. Um, that is just phenomenal, but it's about thirty quid a bottle. So, what's your measurements for a bull of a bull of idea? Similar, just 30, 20, 30, 25, 25. Right. Um, and what what are you using? Rye? Are you using bourbon? What are you using? A lot of people like rye in it, but I just like the. I prefer a bourbon in it. Uh, martini. I'm going to put this with a Manhattan. Yeah. I think it's a beat. It's a beat. Like, so, Embry's, Find Out and Mixing Drinks, all of those, other than the old fashioned, is ending up in uh, in B here. So, the other one, right, and, and so I think it's old fashioned, Manhattan, daiquiri, martini, sidecar, and it's a Jack Rose, which I haven't got. I haven't got a Jack Rose. A sidecar for me. I can't put it any, anything higher than B. Sidecar is actually delicious. It's like lemon and brandy. It's really good. Um, um, I think I'm just not a brandy fan. So where are we saying for margarita? Very, uh, I think it's an A. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think tequila is great. I think it's a perfect summer drink. I think it's great. It's it's a daiquiri, but with tequila. There's one more S tier that you, you need to mention. Go on. The best drink that exists. The best. This is really hard without seeing what I've said. The first cocktail served in an egg cup in a French-speaking place. French egg cup is cocktail, so it became known as a cocktail. Created by Mr. Pyshord in New Orleans. Mr. Pyshord of Bitters fame. Yes, it's it's the it's where the old fashioned gets its name. Started off with brandy and absinthe. All right, yeah, I knew you'd have Sazerac on this list. <laughs> I didn't, it's, the I best, didn't know. it's the best drink there is. It's the best drink there is. It is perfect. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to concede this because I do love a Sazerac. Like, obviously, it's very, very product dependent. Like Sazerac rye yeah. is great as long as you use a decent rye i think i think i can get on board and a decent absinthe as well just delicious but yeah it started off with brandy uh, and actually a brandy sazerac i absolutely absolutely love it as like a twist up going back to the classic recipe the first ever cocktail it can't be anything other than an s this is one for my friends aperol spritz it's a c it's not controversial i don't hate it yeah it's a c it is a C. It's a C, yeah. yeah. So Dick Bradsell made three really famous cocktails. The Treacle, which is essentially a rum old-fashioned, uh, but no one seems to drink them. I don't know why, because they're good. Um, so the Treacle, the Espresso Martini, and the other one that Dick Bradsell was really famous for, he made it with just English ingredients, and it's, it's meant to represent the English country, oh, countryside. So, just English ingredients? Yeah. So gin, lemons, and berries. Oh, brambles. Yeah. I like a bramble. Like, I would, I could, again, it's not only, I can't put it on the same level as a Manhattan, but for me, it's a C, C pushing B. I've got it as a B. Okay, yeah, I can I'll, live with B. No, I'll put, I'll put it as a C. I think it, I think it fits in with a porn star martini, a zombie, and that Aperol spritz. Definitely on that tier. A Long Island? Yes. <laughs> this was the one we were talking about earlier. It's got to be, right? It's absolutely, no. it's not, for me, it's F. Straight up F. Uh, you can't pick out I've any of the flavours. It's loads of crap alcohols, just so that people say, I'm drinking four different, four or five different shots. I, c- I could live with you there. I wasn't going to put it as, as low as F, but... Yeah, I mean, the one I thought we were talking about before, I thought you'd put a rogue uh, Blue Lagoon in. Blue Lagoon is there, yes. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Get, ding. Get bonus, bonus points for James. <laughs> get, it, get it down there with it. Yeah, That's yeah. the worst drink. I'm not even going to go into the ingredients of those things. Yeah, just get it down there. Cosmo. Yeah, okay. Right, Co- Cosmo. This is nice and simple. It's We've just put Bramble in at sea. Yeah. Cosmos are delicious and very often made badly in places. For me, it's, it's a C or a D. Like, so I put it at C, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it down to D because it's a vodka base, and like if you're making any cocktail with a vodka base, it means that you're not thinking about the the, the, the spirit. You use it. a good Cosmo. You've got the lime, you've got the lemon. Uh, you should have some sort of orange profile, and you've got cranberry. So you've got four fruits in there uh, and, and sugar, and that's all it tastes like. It's not a drink for a cocktail drinker. It's 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 nice. And I like Cosmos, and I get why they were popular in the 90s. It's not, it's, it's not as good a drink as a Bramble, is it? Cobbler. They're about 100 years old, maybe older. I think Jerry Thomas had, cock- had, had Cobblers in his in his cocktail books. Um, but yeah, loads of fruit, packing loads of fruit, uh, mint as well, uh, sherry, falernum. Um, but yeah, it's like really good tasting, not that alcoholic. Uh, you can serve it in punch bowls and stuff like that. I'm having it as a C. I think it's a good C. Just, yeah, I mean, the only just because it's historically relevant and it's not used nowadays. I've seen them on menus, and any menu that's ever been on, they've never sold. Yeah. And I don't know whether that's just a modern palette, but I'm happy to see. They are delicious, though. They are, like, like old-school cocktails used a lot of beers and wines and stuff, obviously sherry being a fortified wine. It's it's really good. I think it's due a revival. I think I think we might see cobblers bursting back on the scene in the next decade. We need to start a petition. <laughs> so there's two, there's two drinks... That are morning drinks. There is the Corpse Reviver, which if you sip it, you're drunk because it's that much hard liquor and, and, and brandy and it will slap you back together after a night out, hangover drink. And then this is the other. Oh, this is uh, this drink's going... Oh. Now, this this is going to get a lot of scorn from people because this is either, depending on what, what you like, this is either A or F is a Bloody Mary. Yeah, it's not an S, is it? Uh, no. And I don't think it's an A. 
I think, like, obviously... Although, I went to San Francisco last year and had the best... One of the best cocktails I've ever had was a Bloody Mary. They're amazing! They're, they're, like, I love a Bloody Mary, but I would never drink more than one, and I would get it because I reminisce about having Bloody Marys. I don't want it on a night out, though. I'll start the day with yeah. it, I'll, you know... Um, at, at my wedding, we were all drinking Bloody Marys. They're great. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a B. I can't put it in A simply because, like you say, I would never go out and order one. It's it's a yeah, it's a B. It's not an S because it, it's not like a Cesarac or a Bull of the Deer. Like you're not you're not going to drink it all the time, but it, it has a special place. So yeah, I'm happy with B. So the last one, yeah. James. Is this the most touristy drink of all time? Yeah, you say? yeah. Long um, Bar, Raffles Hotel. Oh, I've been. I'm a big fan of the Singapore sling. With cherry, with orange, with pineapple. Gin as your base. I put this at a B. I was thinking S, and then I, I've got it as an A. Yeah, I could, I could go, I could go A. I, I love it as a drink. James, thank you very much for, uh, for for coming on and doing this with me. We should do this again with something else, maybe. Yeah. Ma maybe for craft beers. Uh, maybe we could. Do yeah, it, yeah. Maybe we could do it um, on your More Cans Eight Wise podcast. Absolutely, and if you can follow my links down below. Hopefully Chris will put them on. Definitely, I'll, I'll get I'll get the links there. James will have to send you them. Uh, but James, thank you very awesome. much for coming on, and thank you Cheers. everyone thank for, you for, much. For, for watching, especially if you've made it this long. Uh, enjoy these cocktails, and uh, hopefully I'll see you at a bar in some, at some point in the near future.